like whether it be writing like you know poetry for no reason because some people don't get it i won't lie like they're just like why would you do that like there's never you're not you don't get anything out of it and i and i've just had to tell them like i'm not trying to get anything out of it at all i'm just if anything i'm more trying to get rid of my, like myself in a way like mm. I, i'm not i'm not you know just trying to kind of get myself out of here out of this out of my head you know yeah and uh just and just knowing that we're we are all limited amount of time I, there's really nothing to fear really i mean bad things could happen to me along the way mm -hmm. but i mean we all know that we have you know we all have a guaranteed out of here and uh mm -hmm. i just feel like why do i care about like what like why should anybody why should anybody actually not just me why should anybody care about you know what I mean, there's going to be people that are very close to you that won't understand everything you're doing. My name is Dooley, and you're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. Yeah, well, I guess we're going to start on, like, how we how we met. I mean, I, I've actually been on a big kick lately of just trying to meet strangers, too, because, like, a lot of my lifestyle stuff has changed. So mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty funny that you even reached out and I'm suddenly on a, on a podcast. I've never been on a podcast before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well... <laughs> That too is where this is kind of just, um, I've done a couple podcasts, but I've even preferred not to do the whole mic setup and, and all that just to keep it more on the kind of raw, um, natural sort of feel. But yeah, yeah on reaching out to you, um, it's actually a pretty funny story just because, so we're doing some, you know, reach out in terms of the pocket change app and everything. And so part of it was waking up that day, we were just chatting. I'm like, who do we think would actually be interested in this sort of, concept of just sharing more kind of truthful things about themselves or just ideas um and it kind of came to just poets <laughs> like people who really go in and i feel like well, well at least my thought with you know i do uh some writing and whatnot but um just some rap stuff you know but um yeah uh, my co-founder actually his mom does a lot of poetry as well and she's always in the app sharing these kind of you know i feel like poetry is a language in which you're kind of using words but you're provoking feeling when you're trying to talk about such grand ideas and kind of you know simplifying yeah. it down and so um yeah i just i started looking into different poetry hashtags when your page came up and then you had literally i think it was like four thousand <laughs> poems out and i was like all right this guy he's got a <laughs> he's got something going uh so yeah tell me about that though what's your what's kind of your background on poetry and stuff like that I suppose I've been writing all my life. Like even when we were, when I was younger with my brothers, when we were kids, like I didn't have a pen in my hand, but like we'd be, you know, playing pretend games and I'd be like, they would each have a character in the game, but I would be like 25 characters. Yeah. And then as I, you know, and then I got older and I was, and they would all know the difference between them all. And then as I got older, I, I uh, like, I think it was fifth grade. I started writing these short stories called Bow Wow and Marvin they were just it was about these just two characters that just did random stuff you know just whatever they just walked around and <laughs> lived life mm -hmm. so i would I, and i remember i liked showing all my friends that inside uh inside my classroom and people were laughing at it and i was like cool like not in a bad way but just yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They're like, <laughs> like what's he doing like because i won't say i mean not every grade schooler is sitting there trying to write stories mm -hmm. but and then I stopped doing that in like 10th grade and then some years passed. I've always like, like, I don't know the way I think even is just very wordy mm -hmm. and uh, poetry started like seven years ago or six years ago. Mm -hmm. It was in 2016. It was at first, I won't lie. Like at first I was just trying to, uh, pr um, I was just trying to impress a girl. <laughs> 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 and I mean, we started dating, we dated for like two years and that, that <laughs> failed. But like, and that's okay but um but i remember i was thinking about like because i was going through a hard time at some point after two years of writing and i was like because you could tell if you actually go back and look at it like there's i have pauses where i'm gone for like a couple months but then i'm like well like you know i have this whole thing we're all gonna die mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not saying that in a negative way it's just i'm just like a, a way to face my mortality it's like kevin like you don't ever have to stop writing you could just keep just doing it for no reason at all mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I'm like, you don't even need to have a reason. Just, just write stuff. What's on your head? Like, I mean, the only reason I feel like people don't do that is just because they they don't want their mom to be like, Ugh, or they don't want their like, like the best friend to be like, 
which you know i've gotten that over the years but now everyone's just so used to me that they don't they don't really care <laughs> yeah 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 and so 2016 to now that's it's 2022 so yeah it's like six years mm-hmm. so t- the of the actual poetry format of writing i've been doing that i've been practicing that for six years yeah oh yeah well i love it too just going in for the writing just for writing's sake um and on that note too if we're all gonna die i actually have a tattoo on my back that's a uh it's basically kind of like a clock pocket watch-esque thing but the whole concept is just an ongoing relationship with time and it's under that sort of feeling of okay we're all gonna just die that could be literally today tomorrow that could be in 80 years mm-hmm. somewhere in that vat of existence um all we really have is just kind of you know not being too cheesy with it, but the, the present moment essentially, and actually just existing. And so to like be in that kind of battle of, you know, knowing you want to do stuff that you care about long-term or have fun with friends in the meantime, um, but that kind of ongoing relationship, I totally feel like. Yeah. I, 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 there you go. I was just going to tell you like one thing, my ba- my base, my base philosophy is, is literally that, you, you don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. And at first, so, and at first, when someone first hears that, they're like, what do you mean you don't have to do anything? I'm like, you don't have to do anything at, at all. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there are consequences, mm-hmm. but I'm just, but it's weird because when I really, when that really sunk in, I was like, the fact that I don't have to do anything makes it so I, I can like kind of just feel free to do whatever now, mm-hmm. like whether it be writing, like, you know, poetry for no reason, because some people don't get it. I won't lie. Like they're just like, why would you do that? Like there's no, you're not, you don't get anything out of it. And I, and I've just had to tell them like, I'm not trying to get anything out of it at all. I'm just, if anything, I'm more trying to get rid of my, like myself in a way. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, just trying to kind of get myself out of here, out of this, out of my head, you know? Yeah. And uh, just, and just knowing that we're, we are all limited amount of time. I, there's really nothing to fear really. I mean, bad things could happen to me along the way. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we all know that we have, you know, we all have a guaranteed out of here. And uh, mm. I just feel like, why do I care about like, what, like, why should anybody, why should anybody actually, not just me, why should anybody care about, you know, what, I mean, c- there's going to be people that are very close to you that won't understand everything you're doing. They'll, they'll say, that's not a good idea or this or that. And it's just like, well, hey, we're all going to be, and we're all going to be out of here eventually. And, Usually the people that usually the people that say stuff like that are people that didn't take risks to begin with, and they, so they, you know, they don't want to see you doing it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually have a couple couple of thoughts. So even the part two to my "we're all gonna die" thing is basically there's the nihilistic view, which is okay, nothing matters, we're all gonna die, let's just not do anything, whatever. And then you actually cross that, like where I've kind of come to is gotten so deep into it that I've now crossed the threshold of we're all going to die. Nothing matters. Who gives a shit? And I think that's kind of a little bit where you're at of, well, then I might as well share my thoughts. It's a might as well thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the, if we're all living this weird, confusing existence anyways, might as well just lean into what kind of, you know, feels right in terms of whether it's sharing or yeah, writing or I don't know. That's the whole point yeah. of the podcast too, is, is in just trying to talk to people and be like, you've got some crazy life story i know nothing about like i just think that that's also cool and i don't know if this podcast is going to do shit or anyone's ever going to hear it ever but who cares i think it's already interesting talking to you and hearing someone else who thinks we're all going to die anyway so <laughs> yeah uh like because like i think i think when we're growing up we, we go through the nihilistic stage like you hear that from others around you or somebody like who's going through a hard time and and you have to mull it over for a long time and you go through that darkness but then if, if like you just go through it all Mm-hmm. you'll be like you'll be like you know actually they're right it really doesn't matter but but the, the whole thing was is why did that have to be a problem mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. like that like it's like we're adding extra information to things that don't require it mm-hmm. it's like it's like okay maybe it is what you say it is but like nobody there's no rule written in the sky that says oh you have to have an issue with it mm-hmm. you just did the, the you probably just saw like it was probably someone really important to you got hurt or you got hurt and then so you made it into this thing where it has to be like this huge issue, mm-hmm. but it, like, but there's like, if you look outside and look up in the sky, there's like no rules written anywhere about mm-hmm. anything at all. And it's just like, 
okay, fine. Maybe it's all pointless, but like that, can that, can that just be okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I went to, I went to that. I was like, maybe it can just be okay. Yeah. That, that, that's the truth. If it, if it is the truth, like it doesn't matter if it is or not, but you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with that, what would you say your relationship with anxiety is then? Like, did you hit a point where you kind of reached over that, whether it be the poetry stuff or just your overall life? I feel like you're tapping into the like fearlessness relationship. Like, how has that played a role in your life? Um, um I'm, I'm like 10,000 times way less anxious than I used to be. Uh, I mean, I, you know, you, you still get flat. I still get flashes of it. You know, you still think like, oh, I don't want to do this. Like, oh, I'd rather be over there. Like, I mean, I'm still human and I, and I still have like influence all around me. You know, I have like, you have family members and friends that complain and like, and you know, I think that human beings are such soft creatures. Like we all try to act hard, but I think <laughs> we're all very, our minds are so malleable. Like, oops. Oh, uh, our, our minds are so malleable that we can be influenced so easily without even realizing it's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but as far as, um, anxiety with me and how that played a role, like I went through a lot of it, like this is the way I like to explain it. I went through so much, you, 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 you're so tense for so long that you naturally weaken and you, you're forced, you're either forced to become loose or you become loose on purpose. Mm -hmm. Like I write about it. Like, you know, if you, if you, if you ball up your fist, like real tight like this for a long mm -hmm. time, yeah, your yeah, hand yeah. will, weak. your hand will weaken and you'll be forced and it'll dangle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, we're made of like, what, like 70% water, you know, I mean, you were talking about electricity. We're made of everything very soft. Mm -hmm. The body is harder. I, I, I'm going to assume that the body is the hardest thing that we have. And that's soft. Mm -hmm. Bones are soft. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've just written so much and I, and I, I'll tell you my, um, origin story in a second, just cause like I, I had to go through a lot to even just get where I am, like within my gut, just not being tense. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, the way I view anxiety is, it's just, it's just your, your gut is tight. Your body's tight. And the only reason to be that tight is to be in a constant stance of defense. Mm -hmm. You're ready you're, you're always looking for something to attack you. Right. But like, that's, that's what I imagined it as. Yeah. So, but then I started thinking about it a little more and I started writing a lot. I, I spent a lot of time alone, like a ton of time alone, especially after my last breakup a couple of years ago. And I was like, you know, I was like, dude, why did that, all that affect you so badly? Like, and then I started listening to people like Alan Watts, like mm -hmm. I, I've listened to sad guru, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of all these guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I don't have big... <laughs> oh, and, and... <laughs> yeah. I, well, my whole thing too was, is like, they're way older than me. They went through it. Like I can't get, like, I can only get so much out of my peers. Like I need to, I, I do need the elders help. I need the, I need our, our elders help. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, and honestly, my peers don't either. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the end, I don't think anybody really. I was, knows what I was about to say that. I was like, I don't think I know a single person who knows yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> like, if you're being a hundred, if you're being a thousand percent honest, like nobody knows what they're doing. You would, you would just tell people, I don't know. Like that'd be the real. That's the only truth there really is, right? Is mm -hmm. that I don't know. Mm -hmm. But nobody. That's so hard to say that. It's like yeah. you, you want to look good in front of everybody. You want to have the answers, and it's like, well, maybe there isn't any. <laughs> if, uh -huh. that, is that is that okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of it's kind of fun even uh having some of these combos too there's a weird thing of it's it's not the it's cooler to me not it's cooler to me to have the best questions instead of the best answers if that makes yeah sense. It, yeah it's more fun yeah 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 because i i've seen it a thousand times the moment we get answers uh, we almost immediately become bored we, we will go out on a limb just to create a new problem just because that's just how we are yeah we need something to do. I mean, if we have nothing, <laughs> we, if we had nothing to press up against, yeah. I mean, imagine like, okay, I've actually heard this explained very well. Uh, actually, Alan talked about it. He was, he would always say like a man who like lost every problem at the same exact time would simply dematerialize. He would almost like, there'd be no reason to exist. Yeah. And it's that whole, it's that whole, 
it's that whole like you just need something to press against it's like lifting a weight you lift a weight your arm gets bigger like hmm. um if you look at you know one of those hospital machines that the uh i don't know what they're called the so. heart, heartbeat thing yeah and it, and it has the thing <laughs> it goes like up and down yeah, like yeah, this yeah. right yeah so your life on that screen is just an up and down line going like this. When you die, what is it? It's just like a flat line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I find that interesting because, mm. because like, the actual fun of life is up and down. That mm. means our descent. Our we we like our descent just as much as we like our ascent too. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you see it mul- you see it multiple times mm. in your own life and in other people's lives. Yeah, this is, this is actually. Uh my exact thought on the pursuit of happiness. It's like how much that statement or thought even bothers me is like, I feel like I've come to a clarity that the pursuit of happiness seems like some sort of thing we create to give ourselves, you know, hope, like I'm in the pursuit of happiness, you know, I'm just very, like, but if you're constantly like seeking out to one day have happiness, like you've already lost the game because throughout the entire you know, heart rate monitor, ups and downs, like to be present in that existence is the happiness. And so like to be pursuing some result instead of recognizing that just Mm -hmm. the being in the pursuit is already having one, like, I don't know. That's just my thought on the pursuit of happiness. No, you're right. There's a thousand ways to say it too. Since I practice words and study words, I realize we have a lot of redundant statements. So even if you look, watch a basketball game and, or you listen to, or you listen to like, you listen to professional sports players, they always talk about loving the process. That is the exact same thing mm-hmm. about as being, pre- that's the exact same statement as I'm being present. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like every human being knows these fundamental truths. We all have different ways of saying it, but it's like, and that's what I've discovered through poetry. I'm like, holy crap, like everyone's happiest is when they're, when they're just completely lost in whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, and that's why I'm in a whole thing now where like, I tell people, I'm like, you know, when it comes to happiness specifically, cause I, I've, I've actually taken jabs at that word. Mm. I always had, I always like, had a problem. I'm like, I feel like it's a dangerous word because it's, cause I think when we conceptualize something and we, you know, we're so addicted to this sound that we made and when we conceptualize it and we try to make it solid and hold it. And then, then, then I suddenly have to act like I have to chase it. Like it's over there. Mm-hmm. It's like, and it's like, why would it be over there? Like you made it up to begin with. Where do you think that came from? It came from inside of you. Yeah. And when does it come out of you? Mm-hmm. It comes out, it comes out of you when you do something that you like to do. It's there's no, there's no secret. The, the joke of the joke of the secret to happiness is that there's no secret to happiness. Yeah. 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 No, I literally, I, I literally think the meaning of life is to be present. And to your point, there are a million ways to say that, but um, yeah. yeah. And I discovered, I discovered that this year, like hundred percent, I've been in many a, a thoughts and different things, or I always thought it was some big grand thing, but I have 100% clarity, at least for me in this life right now, that the meaning of it is literally is just to be present because when you start to do that, like your energy is your ultimate gift. And when you're actually present with yourself, like that's where your energy gets explosive out into the world and then that's when you actually whether it be inspire or bring light or whatever you want to call into other people i feel like that only comes from your presence which then like lets that overflow of energy which then creates the at least one speck of a upward momentum for the collective to actually start to bounce off of that energy um yeah that, that's not that with presence but you, you're compl- i think you're completely right i mean I actually think that people to set out inspire are less likely to inspire than people mm-hmm. who are just simply enjoying themselves already. Yeah, yeah they'll yeah. they'll be naturally in, they'll be naturally inspiring because it's like because like every we can all see it, everybody can see it. Like you know, you're in a room with a bunch of people, and that guy over there or that girl over there, they like they like they're doing so much that they don't even notice us like at all, and we we're like everyone's looking at them because they know that there's something up with them. Mm-hmm. Their, their their energy is just like, like it's just taking over the room or whatever the object or the game or the whatever you know whatever it is that they like to do or people want and people want to watch mm-hmm. yeah 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 so this like, is my um do you know uh do you know the musical artist tash sultana no 
Okay, I'll send you a video after this, but there's this video where so she's unbelievable artist, just guitar, great voice. She actually has a one um one human band, as in she plays all um all the different instruments herself and is live looping. But basically there's this video where she kind of um from you know, a couple of years ago where she went a little bit viral in terms of kind of catching her break and actually, you know, getting out there with her music. And it's a thing in her living room in her house or and so She's got her whole guitar pedal thing going. She's playing guitar. She's got her mic and the drum pad. And it's probably an eight-minute thing of her live looping and creating a song. And mm -hmm. yes, the song's unbelievable. And she's rocking and killing it. But like, the video itself is like pure magic. And what it took me a while to understand now is you're watching her just absolutely in her complete flow, like, like complete presence, complete loss of anything else you can just like see and feel through her music and her body language and everything. And so my whole theory too, is to your point, like, what's, why did this video go viral? Why did it connect with people? What was it? It was, it was her being her truest self and then opening that to just share with the world. And that's where people connect. And so I'll send you the video, but it's one of my favorite, like yeah. I'm huge into music production and all that stuff, but it's one of the most inspiring things for me. Cause I'm like, that's fucking that's it right there. like whatever it is whatever she's doing that's it and like that's what you should achieve is not to be what she's doing but to have the confidence in yourself to just be you which you can so clearly see her doing in the video um yeah so yeah I'll send it through so wait, what just to what, oh yeah go i was just saying just to basically completely lose yourself yeah 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 yeah, yeah you're gonna love the video she's 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 a beast um yeah so what's a little bit of your origin story like even having come to all of these thoughts, what, what's, what's your, what's your story? <laughs> well, it's actually depressing. It's like a depressing start. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was born in 1987 to parents who, who were 16. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's not with us anymore. He, he killed himself when I was three years old. He was actually, he was actually really abusive and stuff, but you know, I, I, I eventually came out after, I don't know, like 30 years, I finally understood what real forgiveness was. Mm -hmm. But so I, we started from that and, you know, he, you know, he was kind of a bastard. He did do some bad shit. Mm -hmm. And so you can already understand a kid carrying the anger of like, they're losing their dad in that type of way, who was already sort of an asshole and like kind of, he just instilled a lot of anger in us that we had to like, learn how to like just deal with growing up. So fast forward a couple of years ahead of that, it's like, you know, as a six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year old, like, I don't know. I, I'd say we were all kind of normal. I, like, it's like hard to say because I we were just there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you just wherever you are. You can only you don't know what it is until you can look back on it. Yeah. So. And my mom was also very young. She was young. She was 16. And he when he died. She was 19 or they were 19, I think. Mm -hmm. I know he was 19. And so that means she had three kids by herself at the age of 19. You know, and I, I mean, I love my mom. Me and her are actually really close. Mm -hmm. But but I mean, she was still a kid herself. Right. So she was still yeah. doing growing up. She was still growing up. She still wanted to party a little bit and like get out there. And she was single for a while. And like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she she always kept the roof over her heads. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a lot of babysitters. We did go to daycare a lot. Like, um, our grandmother, our grandmothers and grandpas, like, helped us along. Um, see, everything for me started like it was all. I would most of my inspiration came from the the feeling of desperation more. I, it, like, I would get so fucking angry I wouldn't even know like how to get it out. Like, I mean, so even when we were talking earlier about anxiety, like. I mean, I immediately had uh, issues with other men. Like I couldn't like, cause even um, the, all the women in the family came to, so they, court, they sort of flocked me, you know, they, they like in, in an act of defense, you know, after he died and all that. And mm -hmm. So I was like kind of afraid of men in a way that like, like I couldn't connect with a lot of people except for like my, my two grandfathers and my brothers. Cause I have two brothers. I didn't tell you that my bad. I, I have two brothers and they were all 
they're all alive when he killed himself and like there was three of us one i was three the other one was two and the other one was like still he was like just below one i think Mm -hmm. and so you know and I, oh, and I have a stepdad too, and he's awesome. He's always taking care of us too. He's from a like rough house too. Like, like we're just all from a lot of rough houses. It actually tends to, they're all Catholic families too. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, I'm not going to try to attack the, the Catholic church right now, but I'm just going to say that it's, it just didn't have a very good effect on a lot of people in my family. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll keep it that at that for now. Mm-hmm. But, I, I like I had to go through a very intense amount of uh, anger, fear, fear of others. Like just I, I was really shy because of all that stuff. You know, I, I only liked my family. I wasn't as an outgoing person. Like what what's happening between me and you here would have never happened if I hadn't actually worked on like connecting with others and like mm-hmm. like and, and moved around. I moved to Pennsylvania. I moved to California just to mm-hmm. I remember I used to I remember in Pennsylvania, I used to practice. So I was like, Kevin, like you don't know anyone out here. So you have to make, I was like, make it a point as you're walking by, look at people and say, hello, that's all you have to do. Even if they don't say it back, don't even expect anything. So I, I, I actually physically practiced looking people in the eyes and saying, hello, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, so I knew I had to work on some stuff. Cause I was just so, I spent a lot of years just afraid of people because I think it's like one of those things when you're a child and you have like trauma like that, you carry it like in your, 20s or 30s like mm-hmm. it comes it, it could come out in really bad ways mm-hmm. un- until it's like recognized for what it really is and you're and also just real quick mm-hmm. about forgiveness not everyone really understands it I, I wouldn't say i have it completely down i know it's in the end it's just a word but i think it's more of an accident than it is an action because you know how you think you know how everybody has such a they're like, Hey, you should forgive them, but nobody knows how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's an, it's one. it's, I think it happens more of as a result of noticing that it's, it's more of an awareness thing. Like, like I realize now that even my father, like he was put through hell, his own hells by his family. And like, you, you get to a certain age and realize like, Oh, he didn't become that all on his own. And even the people that hurt him, they didn't become like that all on their own. And then you realize, oh man, I'm just blame shifting at this point. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is just me wanting to be mad. And mm-hmm. so, and so once that illusion kind of fell, it's like, holy crap, Kev, like I- I'm going to have a hard time even getting, keeping anger held at anyone now, because it's like, who do you really blame in the end for anything? You know, mm-hmm. there's nobody to like everybody. Some of us get screwed up. Some of us have better lives, whatever. I'm not, you know, there's no point to over compare. It's just, I mean, I just went to work on myself for many years. I saw it. I, I had, we have the internet now. I was like, I could go listen to people that went through stuff and, and figured it out or like, or, or listen to people like who know about healing. I was like, this is the stuff I was just getting interested in. And, mm-hmm. or, and I, I was always a kid that, since I was shy, I was always into video games, books. Like I was into making stories and just, I want to make my own characters. I didn't, you know, at first I didn't even like it here. Cause it's like, I don't trust anything here. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot more to it and it does get deeper, but I don't want to like consume everything with just, just my origin story. I, I think everybody's origin story has an insane effect on them. We all already know that like, from the ages of like from zero to six or just so formative that some people take some of that stuff in a well into their seventies and eighties. And it's still a problem, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that healing or forgiveness just happens as realizing mm-hmm. that they just, they didn't become that all on their own from, for starters. So there's nobody really to blame in the end. Like in the end, the real end is, I bl- either blame it on my dad or I blame it on his dad or I, bl- you know, or I blame it on their dad's dad. And it's like, you can mm. go on like that forever or you could just put down the sword. Like you could put the sword in the ground, like just stop. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you get cal- and then you calm down and you realize forgiveness naturally sets in mm-hmm. when you simply, when you simply don't even want to shift blame into anybody anymore. Mm-hmm. And 
then I mean, and there's all there's also a lot of happy stuff that happened too. It's just that you have to understand when you're you know when your dad commits suicide at three when I'm three years old, like that's like one of the main parts of my origin story for sure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, and and not only that, but he also, I think he killed himself out of guilt because he uh, he he used to beat my mom and stuff. And he beat he beat us like so. You know, it was pretty bad. Yeah. And that's why and that's why I didn't trust people. But mm-hmm. but I learned that one of the best things I learned that in my late twenties to thirties, actually, it's crazy how long it takes sometimes. But is that nobody's scary. And trust me, nobody wants you to look at them like they're scary either. Mm-hmm. They, cause like, cause you could almost be asking for it sometimes. Like, you know, people just want to be looked at like regularly. I've met people that, you know, they look scuffy. They look, they, they, when, like they, they've been in some scuffs, they've been through a lot of stuff, but if you're not afraid of them and you just approach them and just like, they'll be happy you did it. Mm-hmm. Not like, you know, some people are like, turn the other eye, don't look at them. Like, and, and they see that they, they, they're hurt. Mm-hmm. Like it at least hurts a little bit. It's at least got to hurt a tiny bit. And you don't want a human being to harden up too much. Because mm-hmm. hard things break easily. Soft things just bounce. Mm-hmm. They don't soft things, they don't, it's hard to hurt them. You, if a hard thing, if a hard thing tries to hurt a soft thing, it bounces off of them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Everybody's origin story is really to me is really interesting. Cause yeah. I, yeah. So I pre- appreciate you sharing all that too. Some, some of that, yeah. hype, like in your early days, where does that taken you now? It's like coming in, did you go to like school or university somewhere? Like where did you move somewhere now? Like what's kind of like phase second half of like even practices, like having gone through so much growing up, like something like forgiveness, it's not just fully accidental, but it's something that like you're mentioning, like, t- like, that, those practices of visit. Yeah. Journaling, meditation, just years of time. Time screwing up a lot, just a ton. Cause like, you know, I went through party phases. I, a lot of, a lot of different attempts at escape. Mm-hmm. Um, oops. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just call it that. Like just attempting to escape yourself a thousand times, a million times until you realize there is no escape from yourself, but you're guaranteed, you have a guaranteed escape at the very end. Mm -hmm. You get, you get to leave. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We just get to leave. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, so the question is basically just how, like how I learned about forgiveness and like all the stuff I just talked about, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to say it's just been like years of, Oh, you just kind of figure it out. But like, well, like I did seek out, te- I did seek out teachers. Like, like mm-hmm. you know, like, like Sad Guru, Alan Watts. Like these got like these older guys. Even even Tony Robbins or Gary V. Like, mm-hmm. just guys that seemed so confident. I'm like, how do you? I'm like, how do you just trust people that much? Because mm-hmm. I mean, I knew one thing, and and when, when I when I learned really understood that people aren't scary and that everyone deserves some trust. Like, mm-hmm. your all of your trust. Because I I feel like everybody view even our views on trust are messed up. Like mm-hmm. everyone's like, you, ha- you have to earn my trust. And I'm like, I'm like, eh. it's already kind of, you're already setting someone up for failure like that. Like you're making it so hard. Like, and then you learn about, you learn, learn about the whole thing of give everyone, give someone all of your trust immediately and mm-hmm. see how they respond and see how they respond. And it, if they give you a reason to take it away, then there, there's that. But, mm-hmm. but like, it's pretty powerful thing to, to look someone in the eyes and really see them. Like, you know, sometimes it's so powerful. Some people like want to look away. Like they're like, Holy crap. I don't want anyone to see me. (laughs) I I just think it's crazy through me practicing, just trusting others, like actually healed me. And I even heard, I I read this somewhere the other day and it said real healing is just communion. Mm -hmm. It's like when you, everything comes back together, you realize like, like I'm you, you are me. Mm-hmm. This this community is only what it is because we're all here. Like, mm-hmm. or or like you didn't become you by yourself. Like you ever heard that? Like you didn't become you by yourself. Mm-hmm. Like because everyone's so obsessed with being an individual. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, that's that's like individuality is it's a semi myth mm-hmm. because like 
because just if I didn't grow up where I grew up or, or moved to the places I moved to and talked to people I talked to or got the enemies I got and then and then those enemies became friends and just everything that ever happened like mm-hmm. you're you're all, you are all of that mm-hmm. even me ta- even the words I'm using right now I, I didn't learn them all by looking up in the sky and get, saying mm-hmm. download mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's not how it happened yeah 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 I say even the kind of back on my thing where I was saying you're being in yourself is like your energy coming out. It's kind of like the relationship between like all things connected is that every single thing, whether it's living or non-living is producing energy. So like myself as a human, obviously there's voice in my body heat and some technical energies. Then for example, like I've got this little, um, rug thing and then audio stuff like that gives off a certain way of whether it be energy that i personally connect to and then it's a way that you may now see or view me and hence enter into a different mode compared to if i just had a huge red wall with fucking i don't know a bunch (laughs) of swords all on it and you're like okay different energy (laughs) but yeah uh, yeah but I, i digress on that point the the point though is that uh yeah, I feel like everything is constantly bouncing off each other and the individual side is really just the collective of everything at which you've experienced or have bounced energy off of. Like, even if you lived your life in the mountains in, or rainforest versus in the desert, it's like that, that breeds a different set of instinct and whatever mm-hmm. it is separate of the way the human or your mind's evolved, but like just the way you are in certain locations changes all that yeah um, yeah a mountain a mountain hermit still had to be taught how to be a mountain hermit mm-hmm. i mean i mean there he or she would have at least had to have had help from at least at least mm-hmm. a small tribe to even mm-hmm. get those skills mm-hmm. and then and then and then they and then they go off and like you know even if you're just hanging out with a dog like like you will i mean <sighs> it doesn't matter what it is. It's what you just said. It's we're so soft and like we we're we're so made of water that like we can't help, but to kind of become what we're around. Mm -hmm. That's why Bruce, that's why Bruce Lee talked about water all the time. That's why I write water poems all the time because Mm -hmm. we're first of all, since we're made of mostly of it, Mm -hmm. we can't help, but we can't, we we can't help but to become the cup. You'll Mm -hmm. even, you'll even, you'll even adopt some dog like qualities. If you're around enough dogs all the time, Yeah, (laughs) like you'll start laying on the ground with the dogs. Like you, like and 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 in the case of the mountain hermit like yeah i mean he he'll or actually i have a really good one for you this is a really good one and it it, it ties into that but actually kobe bryant talked a long time ago about when he was developing his jump shot he was watching the discovery channel of course Mm -hmm. and and he saw a leopard or i don't remember what cat it was but it was a cat with a long tail and he and he noticed when the cat was running that it was helping itself balance by moving its tail around. And so he basically said, you know what? He, I want to, I want to incorporate that in my jump shot. And he ended up kicking his leg out and using his leg as counterbalance to use his leg as, as a cat's tail. And mm-hmm. that became his, oops. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then he became, and then he used that to basically, he, he just realized that he could use that to make a better jump shot by counterbalancing with his leg. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I've also heard it said that for, like a, all human beings origin story, we we've only been copying animals almost the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like everything we got was from them. We made it like we have these. So mm-hmm. like we modified a lot of it, but like mm-hmm. all of our basic instincts come from those, like the, the leopards, the alligators, the birds, like we're obsessed with all of them. That's yeah, yeah, why, yeah. like, obsessed. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's nothing, I mean, to us, they're aliens, you know? Yeah, yeah, Well, the trait, <laughs> the trait, what you are talking about too earlier with us being water and this malleable thing, I said the number one most powerful trait of humans, and I also think the most deadly is um, our ability to adapt. So, like, how quickly you can become either accustomed to a certain life that's of, maybe it's nothing of fulfillment, you just become adapting to that or vice versa or location obviously evolutionarily adaption but um i think it speaks into kind of the metaphor metaphor of the water and like we so quickly mold into whatever we have to deal with uh, which is powerful and good but then also 
can lead to ongoing oppression or being stuck or a slave to the system or whatever it might be. Um, but uh, it comes back to the water. <laughs> yeah. I, well, me and you met because you were talking about my lightning poem, mm-hmm. which I, I mean, I, and I, cause like electricity, water, like all that we're made of like this, you know, whatever this is, this is all made of, uh, it's made of all that stuff. Like yep. all the, all the, you know, like dietitians will tell you, you have to eat these minerals and, and these, like we're just made of all of that stuff. Like this, this the, being the vehicle, the electricity, it's tough to say who's in charge really. Mm-hmm. Actually it's fun. even who's in charge, you know, electric, electric language, you know, our whole language is like molded around nature. It's completely and utterly molded. I mean, even waving, waving and waves, particle yeah. waves, water. Being it just waves. took me a second when you just said who's in charge. Like I just bridged what you meant by like, like, yeah. charge, like electric, like who's in. We, we like, you're talking about adaptability and, and I, and I have to imagine like the first couple of humans, the first ones that were ever made, they had to like look at they had to look at all this like they didn't have they couldn't talk like this there was no you know there was nothing they were just like these open books like or these open like i i couldn't even imagine what that was like it must be like a weird acid trip or something i don't, yeah. I don't know <laughs> but just just to be that open you know like you don't know what anything is it's like a crazy childlike state of being and mm. and i i don't know like i just And us being that adaptable, like we, even words, like all of this stuff, words are used to explain that they're an afterthought. They're, uh, they're meant to describe what's happened, actually happening. Mm -hmm. That's why we, that's why I always feel like people shouldn't, we shouldn't get overly caught on the language. And that's, you know, I mean, we're literally copying all the animals we've ever seen this right now where we are in history. We're like, we've been practicing this stuff for, I don't know how many, how long humans have been alive, but Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been working on our form. Like, let's say we've been working on our form for like however long we've been around. Yeah. And like copying chimpanzees, copying dogs, even a child. The first thing a child does is they immediately look around and start copying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that's what we have to do. Mm-hmm. That's why. I, that's why I feel like people should we should we should really stop demonizing followers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always lead and follow, but it's actually no. You actually have to learn how to do both. Mm-hmm. And you also have to real, and you also have to realize that everybody is equally a leader and a follower. Mm-hmm. We have to be. That's how. That's the only way we were able to come together, mm-hmm. and like survive, like whatever animals like try to kill us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's. Who knows what our like our ancestors went through to for me and you to even be able to have this conversation? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I do you mean? Think- with with human language and like expression um and the childlike thing i actually go back to that with when it comes to art is the childlike instinct is where like that's where you should go with it kind of comes into trust in your gut all that sort of stuff um yeah when you were actually writing poetry or like even these thoughts coming out like do you literally just thought write share or what's your kind of process yeah yeah i mean sometimes sometimes like because like you know when you write as often as i do you can get bored of yourself pretty easily i mean i do i get bored of myself <laughs> like i I'll, I'll i even have written poems about being bored of myself like yeah yeah yeah. but yeah like i'll i'll like i'll just come out with it because like i was we were talking about earlier i just don't want to like act like i'm afraid of my own kind anymore like mm-hmm. and I'm, in fact i think that we should welcome judgment like we have we have brains yeah judgment Judgment is going to immediately happen no matter what anybody says. Immediately. Our brains default into it. There's nothing we can do. Like, it's like you were talking about earlier. If you had a red wall with swords, like, yeah. I'm going to have a, like, I don't know who this guy, but I think he's into swords and may, like, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to immediately, my brain's going to at least think, like, okay, it's going to think a couple things. They may not necessarily be bad, but I, mm-hmm. I, I think. <laughs> You know, I, I don't think we would take judgment as badly if we were actually just okay with the fact that we're all just going to be. Mm-hmm. And that the childlike stuff that that's that actually is what we were talking about earlier, the people being in the flow, they return to the state of curiosity and being a child. Mm-hmm. That's literally what, Je- that's what Jesus was talking about, actually. Mm-hmm. 
he literally he literally was i mean i'm not super religious but <laughs> i do re- but i do respect jesus as a, an actual teacher just a regular you know just a teacher and i do like the one thing he's always said he says returned again as a child and yours is the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. and that and that phrase has has been said reset in a trillion more ways since then mm-hmm. and you have to remember i'm a writer so i uh, sometimes like I'm not looking at somebody just because they're in a certain religion. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm looking at what they said as a human being. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's really interesting. And I look down the road here and here we are. And like, and all the people that we're the most interested in, the ones that are really enjoying their craft are the ones that have stayed in that child. Like, like they still enjoy this that much to like smile that big. Like their eyes are smiling at this and it's just, so I think, and that childlike state is that curiosity. Like you're curious about everything. You're, you're not presupposing too much. You're not saying like, this is this, that's that, that's that. Mm-hmm. And nobody can tell me otherwise. It's like, why would you want to be, <laughs> why would you, why would you want to freeze your brain like that? Why would you want to be a rock? Like yeah. we don't really know what we are at the end of the day. Like we call ourselves humans, but we just agreed to call ourselves that, but yeah. we don't really <laughs> But we really don't know what we really are. And if you, if even if I'm looking at me and I'm looking at you, we're like, we're pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very odd that we can do any of this. Yeah. 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 Very weird. And ordinary is just a weird word that is, it like, it tricks you into thinking that this, any of this is like normal. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's not. <laughs> And, and in the uh, end, and in the end, we're all going to die anyway. So, <laughs> right and right, and and what I would tell people is like, look at that as a good thing. Nobody said it has to be bad. I mean, just because like our ancestors acted all frightened, because hmm. dude, what if it actually ends up being a really awesome experience? Like, yeah. let's say, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right to the worst thing that can possibly happen. Everybody, nobody wants to be burned alive, okay, or buried alive, or something like that. Hmm. Um but I'll just use fire. So you're burning alive. Yeah. I'm, it, it's probably terrible. It probably hurts. It probably, it probably really does suck, <laughs> but, but I just feel like the actual, like actually dying. It's probably like one of the most insane, amazing experiences we'll ever have. Yeah. And we only get, to, and we only get to experience it for I don't really know how long, I guess I shouldn't really say I should be careful. You know, I don't, I don't really know how, what that experience is going to be, but I, I feel like we should at least be a little cur- more curious about it as opposed to, because why am I going to act like one event like that should make me walk through life in a defensive stance, like a very back stance, mm-hmm. like, like, like it could be the greatest thing we ever go through. Mm-hmm. And why would we want to go toward it? or even just approach it all. If I have to simply like, I had to like be like this for, you know, for the next 50 years. Yeah. I think that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Have and, you ever, uh, huh? Have you ever done DMT? No, I actually would like to, um, I don't want to smoke it though. I would like to actually, I actually have a dream of this. I really want to drink the tea, the ayahuasca tea mm-hmm. with a, with a group of people. I don't want to do it alone. I, I don't think that's, I might as well just do it with a big group because mm-hmm. I want to experience, I want to experience that energy with, you know, a circle of people who would just, mm-hmm. who just want to see what that, <laughs> that, that tea is all about. See what that root has to say. <laughs> so if, if you need a, if you need a spot, so that's actually this rug. Um, I got this in Peru. I actually did this past summer, a, um, like an ayahuasca retreat in the Amazon jungle, which is like a 10 yeah, day. Sorry. Yeah, so I can, I'll, I'll send you the info because this is like, I think exactly what you're talking about to where it was um, basically eight days of silence and meditation essentially to where um, you're on like a plant dieta for um, eight days. So no salt, no oil, no sugar. Um, you have no access to technology, time, no mirrors, no anything. And then awesome. every, yeah, so then every other night, a, uh, like uh, the plant ceremony. And then basically all that time in between is just you essentially becoming best friends with yourself is kind of how I like to, how I like to put it. Is it really kind of, you're in like spirit jail, basically. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of a fun and not fun. Fun is not the right word. The most intense thing ever possible. Kind of, I mean, everyone has their own experiences, but super, super intense, but also I think extremely 
eye opening. And then the power in it definitely, I think, came from all the time in between, too. Of, um, that's where, when I was talking about the clarity of the meaning of life is to become present, that entirely clicked via that thing and not in a manic way of, oh, I get, I get it now, but like, uh, oh, now I'm starting a journey here with that knowledge at which I think took me years to kind of come to a certain catalyzing moment, but that was definitely one for me. So and there's a million other things, but <laughs> that's a whole another, whole another topic. So you've, actually, you've actually gotten to do it. Like, cause that's for me right now, that's just a dream for me right now. That's still something that's somewhere else. It's just not here right now, mm-hmm. but I, it's always been on my mind. I was like, man, I'd really love to go down to South America and just do it with a, do it with, do it the slow way. Because yeah. I've actually, I've actually had people offer me DMT to smoke it. And I'm like, I'm like, I- I'll wait. I-, I have patience. Like mm-hmm. it'll happen when it's supposed- I don't want to like, cause I I've heard like, it's still intense. It- but the thing about that is it's first of all, it's smoke going in your lungs. Right. So naturally it's a really fast stuff. I guess it's like a fast trip. I've never mm-hmm. done it, but so it's like 30 minutes, like speed trip. Like you're going through the cosmos fast as opposed to, what you're talking about is the slow way of just taking your time and walking through, like, you know, preparing your body, actually drinking the tea, going through that trip, which I, I don't, I don't, how long did it last for you? Like I've heard eight hours. Yeah. I was about to say eight to eight. You basically do it through the night. And sometimes I was up all the way through to like sunrise, just kind of in this, like, in this world of <laughs> i don't know how to again this is where human i have my whole journaling for all this stuff one of the things i came back to is there's no nor will i not try to explain or there's no need to justify in human words what like how to express what i like went through so i'm not really even going to try but uh, that's sort of i think how, how to your point i think a great way to do it because it's almost great and it's not greatness as in it gives you the time and having the days in between to like digest not physically digest, but mentally and spiritually digest the whole thing and like have your own sort of realm, but like knowing that there's still the support of other people that are kind of in the same space of their own. Um, but yeah, man, maybe, maybe this is, <laughs> maybe this is your weird calling. I'll send you the link. It's a great, it's a, it's a spot. I definitely recommend in terms of them approaching it from the fullest authentic way yeah. and, um, all that so <laughs> it's funny it's funny that they prep your body by making you not eat like because I've, I've actually been going through this process I'm a, I'm a new I'm a new I'm a baby vegan I'll let's say I'm, I'm two month old fresh vegan mm-hmm. so I gave up like so much stuff and, and not only that but I, I I've, I've sit, like I've almost took salt like I haven't taken salt completely out it's, it's like very, very hard. I, I actually call sugar and salt the original drugs. Those are the original addictive. Oh, yeah. Dude. Original <laughs> drugs. I had no idea. I knew, and this is where it was, I knew shit was like, oh, everything's got sugar and salt. When it was cut out, like first day or two, it's kind of almost funny. I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I basically didn't eat for four days. Like it was like, it was like a whole, but that's also kind of trusting the whole process. Like that's where it was a weird, um, there's a whole relationship with food thing that came up during a lot of the, it, so you kind of, you know, trust, trust everything that's going on, but uh, it, it's, I can't express enough how crazy it was to not have salt. I think in oil was like the biggest cause sugar, you kind of imagine cutting out like candy or sweets or carbs. Or this was like, I was in pure disbelief after three days of what happened to myself and understanding what we're actually consuming just from doing that. Yeah, it's it's actually really insane, man. Uh, it's I mean, wow. Like I, I know what you're talking about because, like I said, I've put myself through some stuff. I went through a little bit of a depression even at the beginning because I because knocking knocking out added sugars was also hard. It's not as hard as salt. It's not as hard as salt, but yeah, I mean, I feel like salt was is the extreme, extremely hard. But uh, and oil, and as far as oil goes, I mean, I'm cooking with grapeseed oil. If I do cook, because I eat a lot of greens and just don't have to cook all the time, mm. and then and then I like I could put olive oil in my salad, but like you're telling me that they even that's gone too. Oh yeah, no, it was like if you imagine taking a bite of a potato, like <laughs> they cooked it, but I didn't know the potato could just taste like nothing. 
Like it was just like it was it was shocking. So. Yeah, that's like so what you're just eating like one like a cooked potato with it's like literally nothing. Grain. Yeah, it's like some grain, a, a cooked potato, rice. Um, occasionally, you get some little strips of um, beets, like uh, you know, like the vegetable beets. Um, and then you, uh, the best is when you get like a hard boiled egg. Um, but again, I, I basically just fell out of like eating. I just like couldn't. My body was in like such a alternate place and the food that was just part of the relationship with that whole experience so i think i don't see that as a good or a bad thing as much as it definitely mm -hmm. i think opened my eyes to my relationship with food and then also it um i think just changes the way that you may be going through all the other stuff for like i at the start of the whole thing i was journaling so much like all thoughts that's like i was putting on managing that i got so exhausted by day i don't even know i didn't even know what day it was at that point like the six or seven or eight or whatever it was it's like i didn't know what the date was. And I just was like, I couldn't write. I was just like in my little thing. And you're kind of just in your own little mini hut, just like surrounded by trees. And you kind of just, again, you lose sense of this whole other thing. But I think the relationship with food brought that far more intense for me, which was, I wasn't in this, oh, let me write down and share. Like I was just me in my little thing, just like, holy shit, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> but also in a way of like, good i'm glad i've put myself in this weird prison <laughs> for a bit because i needed to um and so but to each their own and all that stuff as well but yeah it's yeah. It good for me <laughs> I, I i agree with you i like how you even said like it wasn't about being good or bad at a certain point because you have to lose both of that to realize like because like it was we were talking about that that this earlier that your your dissension is just as important for your ascension and vice versa you know they're both mm -hmm. they need each other mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean i just I, i'm just right now all i'm trying to think of is not completely knocking sugar and salt out and I'm like my eyes i'm like that's that's hard no yeah no, i would not <laughs> maybe try to do it you know you do a meal or two and then you go ah fuck that but nobody would nobody would even want to eat with me ever <laughs> they'd, be like, they'd be like nah don't, just don't even don't invite him to dinner <laughs> no it was it was crazy trying to get back in so it was in um like so jungle in peru and then on the back end of it um stayed a couple of days in like Lima to kind of try and ease back into just society before even coming back to um us but the eating was so crazy because especially for me i just hadn't like been eating so um and you're kind of supposed to keep it going like no cold drinks um things like a, a couple other different things but yeah, even just slowly back back and back into it was basically eating like small vegan vegetarian meals for a few days just to like start to grasp back in but i got That's full <laughs> i had this whole <laughs> um part of the relationship with food though was getting permission from the <laughs> the higher powers of interconnectedness. Some could call it the mother ayahuasca or whatever it was, but I had this like one section where I was fully in like nacho worlds, like nacho cheese and chicken and all this stuff, like in this whole thing. And so, cause I had this whole question too about the, um, and still think about this, like, and like kind of the more animal rights side of stuff. Like, and like I'm mur like murdering a live being to like re enter my energy. Like, how does that live with me? At the Greeks, I've always been such a, I'm a huge food person in general. Like I love food, but I kind of came to that thing of like, no, that's like where it's at. It's not necessarily completely right or wrong as much as it's about having respect for what it is that's actually happening. So that was like, <laughs> that was a clarity too of no, like I genuinely love food. It's, I just need to recognize the appreciation I have for it at a much more consistent level than just uh, where it's at. So then I can get my, my nacho visions come true. <laughs> <laughs> Nachos are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I haven't really, I can't eat them anymore really. Cause I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no, I, I don't eat, che I can't eat cheese. So yeah, I mean, cheese or chicken. <laughs> it's all gone. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing is, is I know what it all tastes like. So, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I have the, I have the memory. I know it's good, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but i have to have i have to be like nope mm -hmm. dude i i literally lost like i mean i wasn't trying to lose weight but i i guess i 
I lost like in two months, lost like 30 pounds. Wow. I, I'm not a big person to begin with. I'm pretty skinny. Even my hands are skinny. Like, hmm. but still I, you know, it's just nuts. I, I mean, I can't even eat basically any of the sweets, any milk chocolates, all of it, you know, it's just gone. And, and I've only been drinking water for, yeah. I've only been drinking water for two months. Literally I haven't had anything other than water. I do have uh, organic chamomile tea, mm. which whatever. But other than that, yeah, that's just hot water and tea or in the, in the chamomile flower uh, bags. And yeah. uh, I'm just trying to cut I, out drinking our <laughs> beer on weekdays. That's my, that's my goal. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, cut al- <laughs> I, I did cut alcohol out um, a couple months before that. I, I mean, I've, I cut a lot of, all out. Same. My life changed very rapidly in this last half year, mm. very rapidly. And it's funny. You were talking about room temp stuff too. I've been drinking room temperature water as well. I, I it doesn't, I don't put, put it in the fridge. Mm. Like, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm like practicing all this stuff and it was hard, really hard at first. I'm better getting better at it now, but mm. man, like I realized like, I don't even know if, we're, if do you think we're even really meant to even were we supposed to eat salt ever really? I don't know. I think we are. I think we are. I think it's too good and addictive for it not to be. Even yeah, even a horse, even a horse will lick lick a rock of salt. They they know it's good. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think salt's part of our. It's like a rock, you know. It's like a fuck. It's I think. Yeah, it's a mineral, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, they just come back to the basic. Anything in excess is not good. So that's, you know, like, yeah. I, even with the, the sugar, it's fine. Like, I call that stuff. It's just, right now, obviously, everything in our <laughs> current world is fucking shot to the moon full of all this shit. So it's like, even a yeah, different we just, conversation. But um, from a basic just, human thing, like, we actually are good to have all these different chemicals in a certain way. Yeah. We just probably took some of it a little out of proportion like literally <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh, i mean i mean i, I eat berries too natural sugars yeah yeah. A ton. yeah exactly i mean fruit fruit's literally just natural candy <laughs> um mm-hmm. cool well so next thing we yeah we just went chat, chatting for an hour any other kind of um last thoughts on stuff um uh, otherwise there's not really any I don't have a direct plan on what's next with this sort of thing. I'm just sort of having more conversations and um, seeing what kind of feels right. But uh, any other things on mind or you want to chat about plug the Instagram, obviously, you know, you you will check out the poems. Yeah. um, Nothing specifically. I'd say I would just go back to what we were just talking about a little bit bit ago. It's not something I made up, but I, like I said, I saw it somewhere and it just stayed in my head. It was just that, Real healing is communion. And so what you're doing here is just talking to people in my head, that's communion. You're mm-hmm. talking to your friends, your family, your uh, strange, I'm a stranger. So strangers, yeah. Yeah. I've been on a big kick of, I want to meet more strangers. Like, cause just cause like I, uh, what I'm really discovering about humanity is not only are we, I mean, we can go through the whole talk of uniqueness and all that, but I just, I think that we're all fundamentally like very alike. Mm-hmm. And, and and playing the game of none of us are like each other is just dangerous and it's mm-hmm. like it's good that we're like each other i mean we we do have like small weird things that are all different from the next one but but fundamentally we just want to be noticed and not looked at like this we want to be looked at like, <laughs> like, like hello like hello even the guy who even the guy who just got out of prison for 15 years deserved like mm-hmm. i don't know what he did and i had nothing to do with his story i I could at least look at it, look at him and say, you know, hello, like, you know, you know what I mean? Mm. So what you're doing here is cool. It's just, it's communion. And I think it, it helps, it, it helps you and the other person. And it's just. Yeah. And now, now I've got a new friend. That's how I mean, that's how I see it. <laughs> and uh, so, I've come to the reverse engineering of my own, like we're talking about like the happiness thing, like on a day to day being when I have a, just a good conversation with someone or like an actual one to be on the surface of, Oh, how are you doing? Good, good. Oh, you're good. How's work? Good, good. All right. Peace. Like anything, <laughs> that, goes beyond, anything that goes beyond that. I feel like I actually have a good day. Um, Cause that's most of my con- like day is made up of either moments and 
quote conversations with myself and what I'm doing or other people. And so the whole kind of even reason in doing this is just to, what if this is a way to help just create more of a space for that to happen more often and then, uh, yeah, kind of a new, new setting, a new way. So, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Glad we were able to chat on everything. <laughs> Yeah, man. And you, and you never know who's watching you too. You have people around you that are looking at you that mm. I was told that a long time ago. You don't, you have no idea who's watching you. Yeah. <laughs> and that has nothing to do with you becoming successful or anything. It has more to do with like, what if your little niece or, mm. or, or somebody noticed you and, they, and then one day, you know, they're like, and they're just a little bit more courageous just because mm. they saw you like doing the same thing. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Shit. All right. Well, we can, uh, yeah, we, we should figure out another time to chat at some point. Um, like there's still many, uh, many things to talk about, but, uh, we, well, we could go on, <laughs> we could go on and on and on. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, we oh, should. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll call it here. Have a good, good rest of your night. And then, uh, that yeah, we'll just keep in touch on everything. Really appreciate you just chatting and being open about stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, I appreciate it too. Thanks for having me on your uh, podcast. Hell yeah. <laughs> do, you, right. do, you, do you have a name do you have a name for the podcast? So it's gonna be called The Real You. And it's the real you. That's right. You did you yeah, did yeah. send me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so that's it. It's just meant to be kind of open right now. And I get I've looked up shit and they're like, oh no, you gotta go super specific thing if you want to find your audience. And I'm like, fuck all that. I just want to talk to like people and the whole second part is thoughts, ideas, perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. It's like kind of like we're all living this human experience and then we present it one way which is which can be true in some things but is entirely just cherry pick moments what if there's kind of just trying to dive at the cracks in between the beauty of all that and that's quote the theme of i have so many different things i like whether it's the business stuff the music stuff talking about the philosophy things internal like candy i love candy like we didn't get, we didn't quite get into that but my point is is i just like talking to people who fuck with shit it's sort of my thing and so someone else is excited by shit i'm like oh cool I either am also or to your point like curious or excited to why are you so jazzed about doing this and like maybe there's something that sparks something for me so i don't know i've just been having fun doing this to be honest <laughs> that's all that that's all it really is in the end anyone else who is like you should do it that way it's like well and you said cherry picking moments and it's like those that's all of that stuff's based on the past like we're really here right now and i I just say keep doing whatever you want to do, man. Yeah. If you like it, I like it. I like talking to people. It makes my day better. It makes your day better. Then mm. there's no rules about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. All right, we'll have a have a good rest of your night. And uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you around. All right.